This is absolutely mental. <laughs> I could do this all day. The G-Wagon is an iconic car. In fact, the G-Series is an iconic series. And when you have regulations and also trying to cater to people who want an electric car, but you want to keep them in the Mercedes family, this is what you get. The Mercedes G580 with EQ technology. So basically the G-Wagon with an electric powertrain. And I think it looks absolutely amazing. We do see some subtle changes that makes this the electric version, which I'll point out very shortly. But basically it looks like the G-Wagon and they've done a really good job. I think massive credit to Mercedes for making this still look like a G-Wagon. So when you buy one of these, you're not gonna feel like it's a bit too different. By the way, this paint here, the Manufacturer Brilliant Blue Color. I think that's the full name of it. Anyway, this blue paint here is exclusive and it's gonna cost you extra 7,500 pounds. In fact, this starts from around 150,000 pounds and this particular version here, which is fully spec'd out, I think, will cost you just under 175,000 pounds. It's expensive. But if you're someone who's already on the market for something like this, chances are money's not an issue, which means this is probably a weekend car. This is probably something that you just want because you want an electric car or tax savings amongst other things. Anyway, I digress. Let's talk about some of the subtle changes that you will notice on this, which points out that this is an electric. First of all, obviously you get the green badge number plate here in the UK. So when you see that, you know it's an electric car. And then up front here, we get the slats as well. So you don't get the typical covered sort of bonnets that you get on some of the electric range that Mercedes do, the EQA and so on and so forth. The LED lights are there as well. They're really bright. This is motor beam and adaptive LED lights. This are very bright on the motorway, especially at nighttime. And it might blind other people because this is high off the ground. It's got big, big ground clearance. They've also redesigned the bonnet as well a little bit, subtle. So it's a bit raised, again, just to make this more aerodynamically efficient. Same goes to the front. Spoiler there, just right at the top. They've updated that ever so slightly as well. It's hardly noticeable, but it is there. But besides that though, it's just like a G-Wagon. Just look at it. It's really high off the ground. You get 20 inch alloys and that's been designed so you get better range out of the car. And then moving on to the side of the car, you get EQ badge on here because EQ technology. You get the side step as well. And listen to the door. Are you ready? Oh, you actually have to do that. And that's probably the only time your kids are gonna slam the door and you're not gonna be mad about it because that's just how it is. It's satisfying, it's very G-Wagon. This front pillar as well, it's been updated. You see this plastic finishing on there as well. You get the side slats here as well. And also it has keyless entry. So as long as you got the keys in your pocket or near you, you put your hands there and this will recognize that's happening and then you can open the door and get in. You also get this uh, vent over here, which allows again for aerodynamically friendly nature of the car. I keep saying that word, but it is what it is. And then we go over here. This is our charging port. And this gives you 11 kilowatts on board charging as well as up to 200 kilowatts fast charge as well. Not the fastest out there. I think we're looking at around 116 kilowatt hour battery in here, here or there. We'll leave all numbers on the screen. It's a big enough battery to get you some range. I was getting around 200 miles on the WLTP for me. They do quote around 283, but you're not gonna get that. And now we move over to the back here, we get this uh, grippy area. So when you put your foot on there to step on, you're not gonna slip off. This design box here, this is where your charging cable goes. So there's a little button you press here that opens it up. And then you have your charging cable here. You have little Easter eggs there. For example, you get this uh, G-Wagon little car there that's printed on the, on the cover there. But you get the net in to keep it in place so it doesn't dangle everywhere. There's another net in here so you can store something else there if you like to. Uh, but that's where your charging cable goes. And I think this is kind of smart the way that they've done that. But you can also opt for a tire, spare tire to go there, spare wheel to go there if you like. And then open up the boot here. It swings out. And one of the things I love about the G-Wagon compared to the Defender is it's actually practical in terms of the space that you get here. I think you get just over 600 liters of boot space. And then you can also fold the seats down so you can get uh, around 1500 liters of boot space. Again, we'll leave our numbers on the screen to get an accurate number for you guys. But this is what you get. And it's very plush and lavish in here, which is something that's very common with the interior of this car. So you get this nice soft uh, material here. You can store so much here as well. You got this uh, covering. If you want to cover this up, you don't want it to feel too empty inside. You can do that as well. You can see parts of that Burmester uh, sound system in here as well. So the sub and stuff like that's all there. So plenty of space, big aperture to load things in the car. The roof as well, it actually goes in just a little bit. So you get more space in there to store things. So 
practicality is no problem for the G-Wagon electric, so the G580. I love the stitching as well. Just gives it that extra luxurious, lavish sort of look and feel. Again, oh, so satisfying. I love what they've done there. Got the G580 logo there, but that's pretty much it with the car. And if I ever mentioned as well, the mirror's smaller than your typical that you'd get. So like compared to the Defender, for example, let's have a look at the inside. So starting in the back, it's very familiar here. We get this Napa leather finishing, so it's nice and plush and lavish and luxurious. I like the stitching on there. It's very comfortable in the way that you sit and I like the sitting position as well. It's, in fact, this is my kind of sitting position because you can see there, my knees aren't too raised and also plenty of space here for your feet. You don't get transmission tunnel here as such, so you can sit someone in the middle very comfortably. You have four USB-C ports here, which is probably the most I've seen in a car in this class. Pocket here to store things available, Burmester sound system all around here. There's a screen that's been spec'd in this particular version. I believe that's an extra. So one passenger have a screen here, they have a screen there. The person in the middle will have to share between either. They can look at whichever screen they wanna look at. And also heated seat is available here. The main point here is it's very roomy. So plenty of space on my knees. I'm about five foot 11, plenty of space on my head as well. You have your climate control here, this turbine uh, or jet engine looking control here as well. Looks really cool and snazzy. We still get your armrest here, two cup holders there and it's forward so you don't sink your elbow into, into this uh, area as well. So really good stuff. Over in the front cabin, it's familiar as well. I think it's very premium. We get this uh, open pour walnut wood finish, which looks good. I think it's actually quite fitting for this car. It just adds to that luxurious element of what you get in here. And this is updated as well. We get 12.3 inch display with all the usual MBUX stuff. So you can open apps, you can have Spotify built in already, for example, you can even play some games on there as well. And then you get some leather material, Napa leather, again, this front seat Napa leather finishing. It just looks really good. And you got some space in here to store things. There's a cubby hole here. You can store a couple of things, USB-C ports in there. And then we get the new control system here, which is some physical buttons. So volume controls there. You can change the drive uh, mode as well. So you can go from like rock to trail to comfort to sport and individual. And also a favorite button to link up with whatever you want it to be. Car button there to go into your settings, your quick settings basically. And a trackpad here to control things. So a bit like your mouse pad. So it's nice and responsive. It's not my favorite, but it's there. And then underneath here, you open that up, you get two cup holders, two USB-C ports, wireless charging areas there as well. So that's my cable for charging things. So my phone is currently in here charging away. So wireless charging. And then there's also a button here, which I believe it's useful for cooling your cups. So if you have a cold beverage, you can use that to keep it nice and cool. And then we move over here, we get some more buttons as well, some physical buttons for your climate control, which is really nice to have. You have this uh, off-road cockpit, which is where you do your G-turn. So this has G-Raw, G-Turn and G-Steer as well. All those Gs are in there. So hopefully we'll be able to demo this because this is a party trick that the G-Wagon has. And you've probably seen that online so many times and it just never gets boring. To give it a go. This screen is nice and responsive. You have uh, Android Auto is available, Apple CarPlay is available as well. So for example, I have my Apple CarPlay connected right now uh, wirelessly. I can quickly turn off the uh, speed one warning sign as well. There's a little button here that you can tap and that will turn that off very quickly. And then if we scroll across, you can see things like store, your media. So some of the apps here, let me just show you. So Mercedes-Benz apps. So you got uh, Amazon Music, Apple Music, Spotify. If you go to Mercedes EQ, this is where you see all your charging information. So you can see how much battery I've got left, you've got things like your range and you can, how you can maximize it and stuff. And then consumption, you can see all the consumption levels there. Parking camera, so you can check your surroundings with it. Nice and responsive, so you can look all around the car to make sure uh, you're not gonna hit uh, anything and it even tells you when the car doors open. Press the car button here. Uh, we've got things like car wash uh, mode, you've got all the functions available, active lane, keep assist, towing, interior protection and so on. You can press all settings to see more. So when you go to driving, uh, you can see what safety settings you have and so on there, so you got a few more there. You've got view call for your comfort mode. In terms of comfort, you can do like easy entry and exit features. So that's when the steering would lift up and down, so allow you for easier entry. We've got massage system, so you can have a nice massage. Energizing comfort is there as well, and being lighting. I think it's like 96 different colors that you can do. But in seat, you can do your seat connectics, or, uh, and also the side bolsters is what I want to show you. So you can adjust how tight it will be and the seat side bolsters will move. So as I'm saying, I can feel it moving right now. But what's also cool about this is when you're driving, especially in sport mode, each side can dynamically interact with the way that you're leaning. So if you're turning left or right, 
each side would activate dynamically and support your sides so it keeps you in position as you're driving so some really cool stuff there in terms of the technology that's available one thing i love about mercedes is they always explore all the technology that they can and put them into the car in such a way that you feel almost at one with the car so it's like the car is there to serve you rather than the other way around and it does it so seamlessly in a way that you don't actually get to you don't actually actually have to think about how does it work it just works seamlessly and then over here you can adjust different things here as well you've got a mixture of haptic feedbacks and paddle shifts for, to connect or to adjust your energy recuperation by default it stays on strong but you can adjust this to go to the maximum mode which that means you can almost do one pair to drive and for a car that weighs just around three tons which is very heavy it does a really good job at doing one pair to drive in and uh, you get that g roar as well so this sound effect you can hear right now i don't know if you got, know if you guys can hear it but it's just roaring giving you that presence in the car and then when you start to rev as well and move off the line and stuff you can actually hear it as well so it gives you that sort of mechanical experience or effect in the car which i think is kind of cool and uh, Burmester system 3d sound system is here so really good sound quality you can adjust the bass and treble and stuff in there if you know what you're doing and uh, it just gives you a really good sound system in there so overall they've done a really good job if there's anything i'll point out it's the fact that the design box at the back would hinder your visibility a little bit at the back so a digital head mirror would have been nice to have like they do in the defender the mercedes-benz g580 with eq technology offers individual motors controlling the tires the wheels on the car so you have four of them this gives you a total of 587 horsepower you're talking 1164 newton meters of torque 0 to 62 in 4.7 seconds and 112 miles per hour top speed it's not just there for show or just to say stats but this offers power but also means you get really good off-roading capabilities so each individual wheels is still able to control the traction the speed and so on so you get a simulated mechanical slip differential essentially as well as that off-roading capability so we're talking that 800 millimeters weight in depth we're talking the tilting angle we're talking the sloping capabilities this can also offer something called g-turn which means if you get stuck at a dead end for example you can rotate or spin around the car and just head on on your way which i think is kind of cool to activate this you stick it into rock mode through the dynamic settings here stick into lower range press the g turn button and just follow the instructions on here and you're good to go so to turn we do the paddle to the direction that we need to go to and then it starts to function so <laughs> this is absolutely mental <laughs> I could do this all day and then you can press the paddle to the other way and it does it the other direction as well so i think it's kind of incredible would you actually use it though let me know what you think so all the party tricks aside this is a fantastic car to drive i've been driving it for a few days now and i have no complaints it's very comfortable to drive it's very responsive and it's got all the speeds to come with it as well plenty of torque 1164 newton meters i think it's more than enough this is a very heavy car yet it offers a good level of experience when it comes to that performance and although it's not as fast as the v8 g63 it's still pretty quick it's just just underneath so it's not like a big massive difference in terms of the gap between the speed or performance capabilities one thing that's missing is obviously the actual v8 experience so in terms of the sound and all that kind of stuff the raw performance that you get but this gives you that instantaneous uh, electric power which means you know transmission all that kind of stuff is no issue so in the g63 for example you might get a bit of lag between gear shifting or when you put your foot down and all that kind of stuff but this one you don't get any of that you just put your foot down and you get all that instant torque and power ready to go one thing they have done really well though is with that g raw sound experience it kind of makes you feel like you're still in the g63 it's going to turn this uh, bing sound off it kind of makes you feel like you're in that car because the sound is closely similar to what that actually is it sounds so so similar it sounds really good and i kind of like it so if you're um and are in between getting the petrol version diesel version or this one at least you still get some sort of sound experience to go with it although one could argue it's not the same obviously uh, but it's there if you need it you can turn it off as well if it becomes annoying having the individual motors there also allows for things like better traction better control over the car so stability feels very good one area that that comes to fruition as well is the turning angle so you'll be able to turn the older turning ratio and the circle is really good as well for such a big car it's a long car at the end of the day right so 
But that aside, really good handling when it comes to cornering. It doesn't feel too wallowy. So, you know, all the bounciness that you get with big cars in this class or segment, you don't really get that with this. It feels very sporty, which they've nailed very well. One thing I will mention as well is when it comes to that uh, wading, uh, you know, meters that you get 800 millimeters wading um, depth on this, the battery underneath it is actually protected as well with some sort of carbon material. So that way you don't have to worry about scraping it on top of when you're doing your off-roading activities. You don't have to worry about scraping the underneath it or the battery or anything like that. It's been positioned in a way that it's not going to get damaged or anything like that. You don't get 50-50 split, unfortunately. So at times you still kind of feel like the front is going to lift off, but not as much, I've noticed, not as much as you get in the G63. But overall performance is very good. You don't really feel like you're missing out in any way, if that makes sense. And they've done really well to make you feel like when you sat in here, in fact, you'd have to tell someone else that this is not a petrol car once they get in because <laughs> it feels very similar to the G63 in so many ways. I also love this dynamic side bolsters, the way that it's moving. In fact, now as I'm moving here and there, you can, I can just feel it moving into place to make sure that I'm kept in position as I'm driving. So really good. Where there's a letdown in this car though, is the efficiency. Efficiency in this car is probably the worst, or not the worst, that's heavy. One of the worst I've seen in an electric car in general, because they do quote two, around 208, 280 miles on the WLTP, but I've been getting around 200 miles if I'm lucky in this, but more so I stick in sport mode. So maybe that's obviously a factor as well and the weather and so many other different things, but it's still not the most efficient cars out there when it comes to its electric uh, capability. So that's something to bear in mind. So if that's something that matters to you, you might want to stick with the G63 and do uh, and get that one. Another thing is this is such a heavy car, right? So when it comes to uh, the towing capability, which is one thing you'd want this car to be able to do because it's such a big car, you want to be able to tow other things with it and stuff like that. You have to be mindful because depending on your license, uh, you might not be able to tow more than around 400 or so extra with this car so you have to be mindful of that as well so if towing capability is something that you're mindful of or you care about then you might have to stick with the g63 so get the diesel or the petrol versions but all that aside this is a really good car if you have the sort of price point or the money to spend you know around 175 pounds 175 thousand pounds then go for it i think it's a really good car very very lavish inside very premium driving experience is good very closely matched to the g63 so i think all in all really great package but yeah let me know what you guys think would you use that g-turn feature let us know in the comments below if you have any questions drop them there as well and uh, thanks for watching see you in the next one